Welcome back to Calgary Barbell, everybody. Today, we are here with the one and only Mr. Taylor Shadget. And today, Taylor's gonna take us through his 10-year-old powerlifting warm-up. No, four or five. Oh, I oversold that. Anyways, Taylor's got a great powerlifting warm-up and he's gonna take us through it. What are we uh, starting with today, Taylor? Today, we're going to start with bodyweight calf raises. You don't say. The reason I start with these, uh, everything in powerlifting starts with the feet, especially the squat and the deadlift. Mm -hmm. Want to make sure we have strong feet muscles, make them nice and warm. Um, you know, a lot of people have ankle mobility and stability issues. Want to make sure we try to clear some of those up. Mm -hmm. And I find a lot of the time, uh, you know, tightness is weakness and I try to lean into that. So if you do have tight ankles, you probably just lean into doing a few bodyweight calf raises. Um, I usually tell people, you know, don't hold on to anything. Try to just like let your feet muscles balance yourself. And right. so, yeah. yeah Lean no. into the stability demands a bit. Yeah. And so how many of those are you doing? How long are you doing those for? I usually do like 10 to 15. My like calf, stretch. hamstring and glute are all warm. Yeah, it's way harder than we think. And we were uh, resting our heels on the bat on the ground too. Probably be a little better if you, we couldn't do that. But yeah, I just try to stretch my ankles out a little bit mm -hmm. and then do a couple reps, try to hold it at the top. It's harder than people think. My calf's cramping right now. It's not ideal. And yeah, just 10 to 15. Whatever your ankles are feeling good, we'll move on. Cool. What's next? Next up, we have dead bugs. All right. So we're going to do some dead bugs. Uh, reason I like doing dead bugs is basically just make sure people's brace is cued. And everyone needs a strong core in powerlifting, so we wanna make sure our breathing and bracing is warmed up before we try to load a bar on our back and try to execute breathing and bracing that way. Uh, so when I teach dead bugs, I teach straight arms, straight legs, uh, try to reach for the sky and reach your legs <laughs> high to the sky. My left knee takes a little bit to straighten there. <laughs> and then I'm gonna teach you, or try to get you to take a deep breath into your trunk, try to fill yourself up with air from the bottom up. And then as you lower one arm and one leg, exhale forcefully. Psh, try to pull your ribs down. Try to knot or try to keep your low back flat to the floor. And then we're going to exhale and bring your leg back up. Psh, and we'll just do five on each side. And as you lower your arm and leg, try to reach the opposite arm and leg to the sky. Are we there yet? I think that's 10. Okay. Oh, I actually love that drill and that exercise for helping teach people that sort of idea of ribs down bracing. Cause I think a lot of people will naturally go into a really extended position as soon as they start moving their hips, which is the same at the top of the squat. People will tend to overextend right as they begin to sit down. So I think that does a really good job of not only the ribs down side of the cue, but almost the like pelvis in, or that little bit of like posterior pelvic tilt maybe that some people need to cue. Yeah, so the cue I use for that usually when people are extending is to make sure your low back's flat to the ground. Yeah. If you can't really feel it, just have someone like literally stick their hand yeah, yeah, beneath yeah. you. And if there's space there, you want to correct that. I think even for a beginner, you could probably put your own hands under there. Yeah. And just start with your legs. Yeah to make sure that you're kind of keeping that contact. But. True, yeah, if you're struggling with that, you can either put your hands on your stomach and just use one leg, uh, and then progress to one arm, one leg when you're ready. What do we do next? Uh, we're gonna do 90-90 stretch with rotation. So I'm gonna tell everyone this is my gate, my hip and low back secret sauce, and you've told me before this makes your back feel bad, so. Well, I think I, I did this a couple times, and yeah, like it was, I probably stretched a little too far or held a little too long or something. I think a lot of yeah. the times you can take something that has a corrective focus or intent and push it a little too far. Yeah. Like some of the core exercises that Dylan did a week or two ago with some like twisting and rotation stuff. If you overload that a little bit too much at the start, yeah, it's going to feel a little bad. So find that for like uh, corrective drills in general, whether you mm -hmm. get them from a powerlifting coach or a physio or a different fitness and health professional people get this, you know, you have internal rotation problems. So we're going to do Copenhagen planks or, or whatever the drill happens to be. Yeah. And then you do Copenhagen planks every day and then you have issues arise because 
you're trying to change, like make something stronger, but the connective tissues aren't ready to train it every single day. So yeah, that can definitely be a thing. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do 90-90 stretch. Okay. Uh, and followed by a little bit of rotation. So when I teach 90-90, Pretty straightforward, you're trying to get 90 degrees from leg to leg, 90 okay. degrees at your front leg. Uh, I usually tell people, for me anyways, my hips are not so mobile, so I'm gonna use my hand to prop myself up. So you have internal rotation at your back leg, external rotation in your front leg. Um, I usually tell people to push their back knee down into the ground, kind of gets a more active position, a little bit of internal rotation, okay. gets the Good. adductor involved, uh, gets the pelvis a little bit more neutral. Uh, this is my favorite like hip, low back secret sauce. Um, so from there, we're just gonna prop ourselves up, think chest nice and tall, and we're gonna lean over top of our knee. And then if you can, just slide towards your ankle and release. And we'll just do like five to 10 of those. Try to feel it out. And remember to push your back knee down into the ground. Really once the stretch kind of just starts to feel good. Oh. Well, it feels pretty good actually. My back's a little lit up from squatting yesterday. Nice. And then from there, uh, whatever leg is forward, you're gonna rotate around that. Okay. Put your hands flat. Think like, push your hands down into the ground, arms long. Stay tall like a puppet on a string. And then the stretch just becomes taking deep breaths. So try to say, take those same breathing and bracing breaths we were taking with dead bugs. And you take deep breaths, you should feel stretched through obliques. And again, the breathing just becomes the stretch. We're gonna to try to stay nice and tall, chest proud. And then we can probably release that and just switch sides. So are you actively like trying to twist more or less? Or are you kind of like with your trunk, are you yeah. reaching out over the left leg here? Uh, I'm usually just trying to keep my chest proud and stay tall. Okay. And I find that as I take more and more breaths, I'm able, as you, you should feel the stretch when you're inhaling. And then as you exhale, Usually you can sit a little deeper into the stretch. Then when you inhale again, that it'll create a greater stretch. All right, we're doing push-ups now, right? So we got some push-ups. I'm uh, gonna assume everyone knows how to do push-ups, uh, but some things to think about. We we're practicing dead bugs earlier. So still focus on that good ribs down. Try to keep your butt squeezed during the push-up. We don't wanna be in like a whole bunch of extension while Get we're like doing- a good plank kind of vibe going on. Yeah. And then the other thing I, try to have people focus on is at the top, really think about pushing the floor away, let yourself protract, push right. your arms long, and at the bottom, uh, really just try to sink down to the floor, get a good stretch. Like letting all that scapular movement kind of go yeah. in through the push up. Let yourself retract and protract, get good at that. And then I usually pause the first like seven or eight, and then- Seven or ten. eight, how many are we doing? Here? Just 10, <laughs> just 10. Okay. <laughs> I'm not as big as you, Ooh. so. <laughs> uh, okay. And are you doing anything specific with your grip width? Are you trying uh, to like mimic your bench or squat no, grip I, or anything I usually like try that? to just keep it like used to hands beneath your shoulders it or slightly outside shoulder. Yeah. I got cranky shoulders, so depending on the day, a little bit wider, a little bit narrower. Okay. Just play cool. with it. Uh, I also got real tight forearms, so that makes or matters too, but yeah. It's nice and tall, butt squeeze, ribs down, try to push the floor away. We'll pause the bottom and just drive up. And again, try to just move in a way that feels good to you. I see why you turned your hat around. <laughs> I keep not running my, into the floor. Not my first rodeo. <laughs> I haven't done these in a minute. And now we do a rep out. <laughs> see who can last longer. Uh, it's not gonna be me. All right. All right. So we pushed up, we dead bugged, we, we, did, we did a couple different 90 degree angles. What are we doing now? Now we got some uh, kettlebell single leg deadlift. Ooh. Yeah, often when I prescribe something like kettlebell single leg deadlifts or single leg deadlifts to client, the main concern or complaint is that, oh, I, the, the load isn't challenging. I just know how I have no it's stability. It's the balance, yeah. Right, and I would say, okay, well, stability is strength. Just use weights that you can balance with and then progress that over time. Especially if you're doing it as part of a warm up, right? Like, especially if you're doing it as part of a warm up. And uh, if it is an issue, then it's a glaring hole that you could probably improve upon that will improve things like hip stability over time. So that, yeah, yeah, because you want to be stable on one leg if you're going to be squatting and deadlifting as much as we can. So, yeah, low hanging fruit, really. Yeah. So, 
You can go same arm, same leg if you want. Uh, I usually do I, opposite arm, opposite leg. Yeah, that's this the way what I, I prefer. prefer. As well. And I just try to think, keep that brace, soft knee and the leg that's planted, keep my arm long, and just try to aim so that the weight ends up in line with my foot. Then just stand tall, squeeze your butt from there. Really try to push my hips back, feel stretch. Stand tall, squeeze my butt. I think some people worry about trying to go too fast through the exercise where you do have struggles with stability. Feel free to like put the weight down, correct your leg, find your balance, and then stand up from there. Not a race, it's a warm up. I'm trying to pattern a certain movement. So the way I do it, and just to kind of add a little anecdote, but the way I do it with my knee that is, is problematic is I'll hinge back kind of as much as I can, and then I'll start to try to ease into a little bit of knee flexion and try to find kind of where my knee starts to get a little cranky. And that way, usually when I get my first few reps in, it's at, you know, almost straight. But as I go through more and more of the warm ups, I can get a little bit more and a little bit more knee flexion in there. Because if I do it on my healthy leg, we'll call it, I tend to like to get like a decent bit, almost more like squatty in the RDL as well. Because I feel like I just get a little bit better or a little bit different hip feel going on. But I think the biggest thing, and Seth had me do these for a while, the biggest thing with him was he really wanted to make sure that we were reaching the back leg back yeah and not like like tripoding kind of you know what i mean yeah i usually like ideal world think or try to explain like your leg should match your trunk yeah ideally yeah. No, i'm probably not perfect but as straight as we can try to make your leg match nobody's your trunk. perfect taylor you're perfect <laughs> all right sticking with uh, no our one. kettlebell we're gonna just do some single arm rows okay i uh, just do them from like a two-point stance Try to get your trunk parallel-ish to the ground, uh, or just try to keep it in line with your back leg. Uh, so just split out your okay. knee over top of your foot. And same idea, I always try to keep my arm long. This is one of those things where when you're doing the row, I want to like let my arm go long. Mm -hmm. And then I think about pulling my elbow, imagine the back of your elbow is attached to a string. And to some degree, I think about like trying to rotate. Yep. I almost that I'm like reaching See, I'm gonna fall over. Reaching my opposite arm to the ground as I pull. Mm -hmm. So as you pull or row, think reach your opposite arm towards the ground. Yeah, or so again, just like trying to really get the scap moving around. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Whew. What is this? 100, 125, 150? <laughs> And I don't think you need much weight, especially because it's a warm up. Uh, I usually use a 50 pound kettlebell, mostly because that's what I bought from the store. But I also justify it as it's heavier than the barbell I'm gonna warm up with or use, so we'll just use that. I definitely used to be someone who, you know, got to the gym, laid on a foam roller for 15 minutes, stretched for 15 minutes, yeah. and then started warming up. These days, just try to keep it down like 10, 15 minutes. Just kind of moving almost right away. This. And I don't know that it's any worse. I'd probably argue it's better than what I used to do. Yeah. I try to think about a lot of it's like active loaded stretching. Through Remember there's been, there's been a few times on stream and I've been going through a warm up, and somebody said, what the heck man? Like you're, you're breathing heavy. Yeah. You've done some body weight squats or, or whatever. And the point is to get warm yeah like if you're not breathing heavy your warm-up probably sucks so do this one instead yeah you can see we're hopping and puffing, yeah. kind of talking the <laughs> yeah. chill exercises at the same time but yeah you should be, be warm should be warm and it shouldn't take forever no uh okay next we're gonna do front foot elevated reverse lunges uh Ooh. i'm gonna do them alternating okay. you can do one leg at a time if you prefer that for me, I like alternating because it kind of forces one, like your hip stability to work a little harder, sure. having the change. And then I just usually, after 10 reps or five each leg, I'll just switch arms with the kettlebell. Neither way is 
wrong or incorrect if you want to do one leg all at the same time. Yeah. Maybe you switch your hands, maybe you don't. Maybe you just change it up every time you come to the gym. Yeah. Uh, if it's wrong. Um, reason I started doing the like front foot elevated stuff, kind of leading into, you know, the knees over toes guy, what he has to say, partly thinking like, it's gonna warm my knees up. It's gonna actively, actively stretch hips, hamstrings, glutes. Um, and then I also try to think about it as, you wanna make sure they were lunging to depth, if you will. I don't think a lot of people, if they did a lunge or a split squat, yeah. that it would be like to powerlifting depth, just cause their knee would get in the way and they would hit the floor. Or even like pretty close. Right. Where the extra range of motion kind of allows us to get there hopefully strengthens everything enough that we feel good in the bottom position of our squat. Well, and I've been a big fan of like a lot of front foot elevated stuff with my knee and just exposing oh, yeah. my knee to really deep flexion under light load very repetitively. Yeah. And I think that's helped me at least somewhat to ensure that whenever I do get to heavier squat sessions and deadlifting, that it's just a little bit more able to get into each part of the range of motion. And I'll do this stuff, like whether I'm doing like full body, upper body, lower body, my warm up doesn't change. You know, it gives you a, a good idea of how your body's feeling on the day. Yeah. Again, usually I'm feeling better by the end of the warm up exercises. And on days I'm saying only training upper body, or if I'm sore from squatting or deadlifting, huffing and puffing. It's like a little bit of active recovery. Yeah. Hopefully, if. Uh, getting just like a little bit of blood in the area, a little bit of loaded stretching can go a long way, I think. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't have a planned training session today. And I think honestly, going through this will probably give me a good sort of GPP active recovery kind of vibe. Yeah. I was feeling pretty sore and pretty stiff. So hopefully running through this will help me feel. Yeah. Just a the biggest thing for me is it lets me know during the warm up how my body's feeling. Yeah. And then usually I'm feeling better after I finish. All right, so we're just gonna start with band dislocates first. Okay. Again, something I do in uh, every one of my squat warm ups at least. Yeah, squat warm ups, bench warm ups. Just feels good. Get a nice stretch through the pecs, biceps, shoulders. Uh, I try to get people to make sure they're standing tall, butt squeeze, ribs down nice and tall like a puppet on a string. Try to maintain that. It can be easy, you start trying to do band dislocates and you just end up in extension. Mm -hmm. Try to kind of like bend charge. We don't want that during this movement. Try to keep butt squeeze, ribs down, get everything nice and neutral. Uh, I usually, you know, start shoulder width, depends on the band and the bend tension. And then as you kind of warm up, you can probably just move your hands in a little bit on the band as things stretch out. Ooh. And again, just like 10 or so. That's an advanced technique. I'm, I'm like illegal wide here. And just try to like, I used to try to keep my shoulders down the entire time, but these days I try to like lean into shrugging up. Yeah. On the way up. A more full range. I think the- Kind of scapularly. You should only do anything shoulders back and down. Eventually <sighs> leads to problems. Yeah. Don't get this on, don't, don't film mine, Dylan. This is a problem for me. <laughs> Two broken mm. powerlifters walk into a bar. <sighs> Especially after a bunch of low bar squat and the heaviest bench I've done in a while yesterday. I'm, I'm struggling through here. here. <sighs> and I'm doing exactly what you said not to do in terms of my chest just being like way out. <sighs> yeah, I was probably doing it too, so. <laughs> All uh, right, and then we're gonna do some Y's. Okay. Um, a few different, I guess, shoulder things I do, but Y's and band pull-aparts are the, the main two. Okay. Uh, if you're not familiar with like YTW, it's basically like you're just making the letters with your arms against the tension of the band. Yep. Uh, we're gonna thread these bands through another band. Oh, wow. Yeah. Knock this over. And I usually just put my hands in and think that I'm gonna point my thumbs at the wall behind me. Right. Kind of thing. I might, not sure how much. And then again, try as best you can. I'm probably gonna fail at this too. Like butt squeeze, ribs down, proud chest, nice and tall. And just try to create, I like wise. Feel nice on my old man shoulders. Try to keep that chin tuck while staying nice and tall. You can mix in some face pulls if you want. 
So that's your thing. Now we'll just do some band pull aparts. Usually try to get people to go palms to the floor. Again, butt squeeze ribs down, pulling the band across the middle of your chest. And then after that, hopefully you're not too sweaty to put your knee sleeves on. Oh, I am. <laughs> That'd be a fight right now, I think. By then, usually I can get on the bar and no aches, no pains, ready to go. And I can just like load weight without trying to, or having to like warm up further. Mm -hmm. well, so when, you kind of mentioned earlier, like the, it's been around for 10 years. <laughs> it was, it's, I started doing this specific warm up was my first workout after I did renal hernia surgery. Oh, okay. And it was kind of like, what movements, skills, mobility is gonna be important to me 30 years from now, 40 years from now? What do I wanna be able to do forever? Like as a, as a very absolute baseline. Baseline, kind of I didn't thing, really yeah. know what to expect coming off of inguinal hernia surgery. And most people were saying, you'll be fine kind of thing, but you never know. Yeah. So I was kind of just built it around, okay, what movements are important? Like what's the enough weight that I'm gonna be warm kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of what I settled on. I think the first time I did it, I just did like three rounds. And then after a week or two, it became like my warm up that I've just kept in because it seems to work well enough for Prepare me. So, you well. And that's kind of usually when I, I send people the, the warm up or suggested warm up. I say, this is what I do. Here's my reasoning for each exercise. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do exactly that. If you sub, you know, front foot elevated split squat for reverse lunge, okay. Or if you have a different uh, exercise you want to do, or there's a stretch that you love doing and you know works best for you. Yeah. That's what I usually recommend to people is like find the movements that work best for you. Try to keep it 10 to 15 minutes, like circuit it, should get the blood pumping and then you're gonna have the break to put your knee sleeves on anyway, so. Yeah. Yeah. And do you do you ever or or what would your recommendation be for something like a general warm up prior to this? You know, if somebody's <laughs> got access to a treadmill or a bike or something like Yeah. Do you do any of that or do you just kind of jump into this stuff? Uh personally no. Yeah. Uh I walk my dog a couple times a day and that kind of handles GPP for me, but I know some people want to like hop on a bike for 5 10 minutes. Yeah. Again, like depends on you as a person. I find Basically, as soon as I start doing dead bugs and like mm -hmm. embracing, that usually warms me up pretty good. Yeah, I'm like, pretty warm right now. In a couple, couple push-ups, most people get pretty warm pretty quickly. So yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't not advise, or advise. I don't advise against like general walking or biking or whatever it happens to be. So cool. Now we're, now we're ready to train. Yeah. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Make sure you go follow Taylor on Instagram. He's obviously a coach here at Calgary Barbell, one of our fantastic roster of coaches. And uh, yeah, like, subscribe, do all that kind of stuff. And let us know in the comments what your favorite warm up is. Or if there's something that you really like that you're gonna take from this, let us know which movement it is. Bye.